Welcome to Newfoundland, Canada, for the very first episode in Team Wild's newest hunting show, Carnivore. Now for some, hunting is about big trophies and wilderness adventures, but for others, hunting is actually about harvesting nature's bounty and putting food on the table and in the freezer. Each week we're going to show you how to harvest a variety of wild game, how to field dress, skin, inspect, butcher and then turn the venison into tasty food for your families using the most effective methods and affordable equipment. Our first series of programmes come from Team Wild's official Newfoundland hunting destination, Ironbound Outfitters, where we hope to harvest a young bull moose and show you how one person can field dress, debone and pack out the meat. Then we'll visit a commercial butcher to give you a behind the scenes look at how the professionals prepare venison from such a huge game animal and give you some pointers on what to do with yours. But first things first, we need to get an animal on the ground and here in Newfoundland it's not always that easy. So we're back at Ironbound Outfitters in Newfoundland, Team Wild's official Newfoundland hunting outfitter, with world famous bear hunter extraordinaire and the finest moose caller on the planet, oh. Donny Benoit. <laughs> Thank you. Is that enough feel for you, Donny? Yeah. Absolutely. So we're back again. <laughs> yeah. So you've seen me already once this year, yeah. and we've had a pretty good time with it. We harvested a nice young sow, nice a little baby one, nice and tender, footstool, I think you call them over yeah, here. Yeah, nice footstool. <laughs> yeah, and now we're going after moose. Yeah. But moose hunting is a bit of a physical challenge out here, particularly yeah. with the ground and the conditions. So. Oh yeah, she's pretty wet this time of year right now. Have uh, you seen cold. any big bulls? Uh, he hasn't been doing that much scouting around this area, but uh, I'm pretty sure we can see him. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see him. This time of year, we've got a full moon too right now, I think, so that could trigger some action. So, so Mark, we know that Donnie knows what he's talking about. It's the first time we see you on camera. Mark's kind of shy, big guy. <laughs> but you've had a phenomenal season. I've seen some huge bulls, pictures of huge bulls. You must have some really happy clients. Yeah, we've had a really good year. Yeah. Yeah, we've got some nice moves, like good yeah. trophies. So we're, uh, yeah, we're finding the big ones. Cool. So, good luck, gentlemen. Not that we need it. it. <laughs> and let's see what we can find. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> For such a large beast, moose can be incredibly hard to spot in this virtually impenetrable spruce and scrub. This is the definition of big country, and we've got a lot of ground to cover in our quest for a young bull moose. miles than I care to remember, Ironbound Outfitters Master Moose Guide Dunny Benoit brings us within shooting range of exactly what we're looking for. A young bull moose that's going to make fantastic eating. Well, when he said within range, he was more than a little optimistic. At 417 yards with a significant angle of decline and a brisk headwind, this is no easy shot. However, I'm confident in the Blaser and Zeiss combo, and I know my aim points with the Hornady 180 grain interlock ammunition. Plus, the target area is substantial. With a 300 yard zero, I aim for a 12 inch bullet drop, aiming for the top right hand side of the shoulder. When wilderness hunting, particularly at long range, getting the animal on the ground is the number one priority so I always follow up my first with an insurance shot. Two if necessary.
going? Down. 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 Get in. Down. So, finally, after, I don't know, I can't even count any more days that we've been trying to get this moose, we finally got one down. Now he's a young bull, he was lying there with a cow. Um, it's 417 yards. Um, as you can see, put the first one in and immediately followed up with a uh, with a, an insurance shot. Uh, we could hear both hit. Donnie said to leave him. I was anxious to get a third in because it's a long distance and I like to see my animals on the ground. Uh, but as you can see, he's gone down now. So it looks like a high lung shot because uh, it's 415 yards, or 417 yards, sorry. I placed the crosshairs just on the top of its shoulders. It should drop roughly 13 inches um, between uh, the 300 yard mark that I've got my zero and then that point of impact over there but because we're shooting downhill um, it actually moves the distance close by between 50 and 60 yards over this distance so um, as you know gravity works in the horizontal plane so we should be aiming for about 350 so probably is hit high but I wanted to make sure I didn't want to hit it in the leg or the brisket and have it running away always best to hit it hard uh, if you don't hit it in the lungs you're gonna hit it in the shoulders and bring it down or hit it in the spine if it's too high what a shot man thank you very good job well, there we have it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Hey, exactly what we're looking for. Little spiker. How would you say this is just over a year old? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Look at that for a shot. <laughs> so this is exactly what we're looking for. This is carnivore, which means we're not looking for big trophies. We're looking for the best meat. Now, Donny, from what you told me, there's two types of moose that you want if you're hunting for meat. What are they? Normally, if you're looking for a good eating meat, it'll be a young bull or what we call a dry cow. Now, this young looks like cow. a pretty young bull to yeah. me. Yeah. So this is exactly what we're looking for. Oh yeah, that's some good eating meat. Young, sweet and tender. If you have a look around here, bearing in mind that's 417 yards, no, no. I don't think I could have placed that shot any yeah. better than that, really. There's another low hole here, but... Yeah. So that's... Yeah, I don't see anything here. Just blood dripping in So I'd be interested when we dress the rest out, see what the other two shots yeah. are. But as you can see... They're being entry wounds, right? Yeah. Uh, this one will be... Um, I would say. Yeah, he was stood over to the left. Yeah, that's an entry wound there. So I'm not entirely sure if that um, 180 grain interlock would have gone all the way through. But one thing's for sure, this ball is down. So while Donnie's getting ready to show you how to dress out the moose, I'm going to show you the gear I've used to harvest it. Now we're hunting in Newfoundland, out in the wilds, which means we're nowhere near any cabins. So you need to take everything you need for the day. So the first thing I brought with me is this backpack. Now this is a Marco Monteria, which is a 28 litre backpack. Between 28 and 35 litres is normally ideal. So in here I've got my sandwiches, some new base layers, a fleece jacket, warm gloves, torches and anything else I might need if I get stuck out here too long, plus a plenty of fluids. Now this isn't big enough to pack it out. What we'd have to do when we shot a moose is pack it out on, on Donnie's uh, on his frame pack, but it is enough for me to carry what I need to keep myself comfortable. Secondly, and most importantly, I've got my rifle. Now this is a Blaza R8 Professional in 300 Win Mag. Now this really is a harvester's dream tool. On top of that, my workhorse scope, a Zeiss, Varipoint 2.5 to 10 by 50, which is a rail scope, which um, has a custom mount specifically designed uh, for the Blazer R8 Professional. I've got my Zeiss Victory 10 by 45 range finding binoculars. Now these bad boys not only have got good light gathering capability, 10 mag, a 45 millimeter objective lens, which is perfect for low light conditions, but they also take the guesswork out of range finding. Now the, when we're set up there on those mountains, it could be anywhere from 300 to 500 yards. It's very difficult to tell, particularly when you're shooting downhill. So having something that can give you the pinpoint measurement is absolutely essential. And as you can see, the result is a dead moose on the ground. Now coming back to my clothing, I've chosen uh, Deer Hunter's Montana suit. Now it's a five in one suit, lightweight. It has a removable waterproof liner plus a removable fleece, which means depending on the conditions, you can either layer up when it's cold or you can take the layers out when, you, when you're walking through the tough stuff and it's getting pretty hot. Now, as you can see, the spruce is pretty thick here. You see me coming through it. It can get really warm if you're not careful. So being able to take off your jacket, take out the liner and dry everything at night 
is absolutely essential. But they've all combined really well, and as we can see, we've got our first moose on the floor, and I think Donnie's ready now to show us exactly what we need to do with it. So if you want to know how to tap into an endless supply of wholesome, nutritious and tasty meat for your table, tune into Team Wild's Carnivore every Wednesday. Tune in next week to Team Wild's Carnivore as Ironbound Outfitters Master Moose Guide Donny Benoit shows us how to field dress the young bull moose we've just harvested. To book your moose hunting adventure of a lifetime with Ironbound Outfitters, visit newfoundlandmoose.com. Subscribe to Team Wild TV to stay up to date with our brand new and exciting lineup of shows for 2013.